evaluation part you are evaluating the way that uh, your proposal is uh, means on the timeline of the on the time decided timeline of the um, like uh, structure next is the sustainability part should also be covered because everybody now is concerned about the sustainability so how your project or your idea is basically sustainable in a in a way that is basically required to particular area so next and the last one part is the budget the budget is the most important part and uh, that is basically uh, seen by the funding agencies that your budget should be within the limit as i have already covered so this uh, budget should uh, like have uh, the idea about what are the what are the limits of the funding agencies and uh, budget should not be over and budget should also not be in the under uh, under uh, under your requirement that may have a 10% to 15% of tolerance that can be covered so that should not go like 1.5 times or 0.75 times so because sometimes some of the funding agencies basically try to cut down the uh, what are the what you have proposed so you have to take a tolerance of uh, 10% 15% over budget that can be accommodated because of the different uh, like criteria that you have not uh, means uh, proposed during the submission so that may be covered in that excess like 10% or 15% of budget and so that is also a crucial part because most of the proposal if it is over over than 1.5 or sorry 1.15 to uh, to that criteria so that also have the chance of rejection from the funding agencies and the last but not the least is information about your organization the organization from where you are basically trying to approach the funding agencies that has to be uh, mentioned very clearly and what are your role and what the like uh, uh, facilities that you have it in your organization that is also covered in your uh, in your pro proposal because that will help you the funding agencies that this much facilities are available already to the uh, proposer so that will help you to get your objectives completed in a in a timeline manner or in an effective manner so that has to be covered so basically we have different kind of projects the first one is the research projects proposals and the other one is the project proposals so once we are talking about the research proposals so that is basically uh, regarding the uh, means how effectively or how it will contribute uh, uh, the research to that particular field so this is about the research pro but once we talk about the uh, project proposal the project proposal basically emphasizes the impact of the activity that we have we have to do and the evaluation is more usually more important in a project because proposal regarding the projects that may have some of the uh, like steps that this activity is finished and this much of uh, uh, like i would say uh, the achievement or the progress is basically done so we can uh, uh, means achieve or we can evaluate the project proposal more effectively as compared to research research is basically done to uh, to dig more about a particular problem or to to solve that particular problem so once we talk about the research proposals what may be the basically the part of a research proposal is the first one and the foremost is the title or cover page title page or the cover page so title as we used to do in your uh, like in your uh, research papers or in your different conference paper in your report so as the title page basically have uh, uh, like it covers different aspect i will discuss that in the in the detail in the later stages of this presentation so title should be very concise and the whole idea whatever you are trying to propose that should reflect it in your uh, proposal in your title so that should not go beyond it so in in a flow in a in a way that you may go beyond the title but try to approach the title in a, every aspect or in every sentence in every paragraph of your your proposal the se second is abstract abstract is like your executive summary so that is basically a brief kind of part that is given i mean that is beyond your title that basically cover the different aspect your need your problem statement your maybe some of the objective in a brief manner and your methodology some of the part that what approach you are following to achieve those objectives and the other thing may be uh, your timeline how much time and what may be the outcome of the that may also reflect some of the part of, of the abstract 
next is table of content that is everybody knows that what kind of contents you are trying to approach what are the uh, table uh, means contents you are trying to provide in a, in a research proposal that should also be mentioned in the uh, in this part then the introduction background that is basically as i have discussed in the previous part also that it should connect with the basics basics means uh, uh, this is not like this uh, idea is that much novel that no basic idea is is available in the literature about that particular problem so you try to approach in a way uh, that the basic things should be covered and if the basic things are there so try to validate those basic things with the work that is already been published and then you uh, try to cover up the ideas then try to uh, let the reviewer come up to the points where you are trying to basically discuss that this is the idea in the existing systems and then you try to solve this existing system problems with a way that you are trying to propose in the in the in the proposal then uh, about is the description of the project proposed research that what you are trying to do what is your objectives what are the descriptions like as you all because you already have discussed the basics you already have discussed the literature review then you are trying to discuss describe your project pro, uh, proposed research then this is that that should be in detail that is not like that uh, you have already covered in the literature part but your idea your description because this is the major major this is the heart of your proposal said so that that has to be covered in a way that everybody should uh, means the viewer should know that this has the clarity of your pro, uh, proposal your ideas that has to be discussed in the way and about uh, description of relevant institutional resources means the organization have certain uh, like facilities for uh, to achieve those objectives that has to be discussed uh, discussed in a in a proper way these are the instruments that we have these are the facilities these are the testing uh, parts that we have at our uh, organization that should be discussed and that also should cover like what are the range of the equipments what are the like what model it is and what company made it is so all the discussion all the description should be institution in this description part of it and the other one is list of references as, as i already covered that literature review part should be there so literature review part i uh, means uh, if someone want to refer that why uh, the information provided is correct or not so the references that should be uh, in a, in a way that should be provided uh, at the end of this and also uh, once you are trying to provide the references so once one thing we also have to take care is the references should be uh, in a in a in a sequential format that should not be one one reference is in different format other one is in a different format once when you are following some of the IEEE kind of things when you are from from the elsewhere general so that has to be properly mentioned that we are following this reference style and they should be uh, like in a subsequent manner once they are cited in the uh, in the text of the description of the proposed research so that has to be uh, sequentially in the list of the references so that has we have to follow up next is personal what are the uh, people you are trying to accommodate what are their eligibilities what are their <coughs> experiences that you are trying to hire for that what are the administrative staffs what are the uh, like other uh, supporting staff that you are trying to uh, like hire for uh, the proposal completion so that the information eligibility what are the experiences that has uh, what would the, what would be the salary for that so that that should be completely or in, uh, informally mentioned in your proposal Based because they are the support system uh, to uh, to to convince the fund funding agencies that these are the these are the basic requirements or basic fund requirement uh, by the by the proposal that should be clearly mentioned. And after the personal informations are there, you should try to accommodate the budgets because you already have informed about the personal things. You already have informed that this much of facilities available to us regarding the equipment. but some of the equipment that we have to purchase so this budget basically cover those equipments and uh, you, uh, the information about the equipment that this particular equipment will be used for that particular purpose and what what would be the range for that means the operating range what should be the model of it what should be the company that is supplying for that and uh, <clears throat> basically in which objective it will be useful for that so these all should be covered means proper justification for the equipments for the personals for the staffs that has to be given in your proposal then only the convince that the funding agency may be convinced that this much budget is 
uh, entirely uh, like uh, proofread and entirely cross check that this is the requirement for a for for the completion of that project that has to be covered in a way. <clears throat> Next is uh, I would say uh, what are the title or I, as I have discussed what are the cover page what it should contain. So uh, I think uh, every uh, funding agency is basically uh, uh, specify uh, the format of the title page. That should not be fancy. If you are making it for yourself, that should not be fancy. That should not be like you are making it colorful. Uh, that basically would not work. The thing is, it should have certain informations. It should have a kind of information that is basically required by the funding agencies. And you should not like make it bind with certain things. You make it a very uh, fancy kind of bindings. You are making it that will not affect the uh, means uh, chances of the grant. <clears throat> so what it should have is it should have the principal investigator and the departmental head and university official is use what it usually uh, basically signed by the officials from the university side. So these are the things that should be there and uh, the name of organization. Uh, from where you are basically trying to submit that has to be there that has to be clearly mentioned because once the project is basically accepted so they will make a kind of offer letter they will may try to approach you through some of the posts so basically that has to be there and more effectively it is it should also have the title of the proposal because some of the projects basically that are trying to basically try, uh, submitted by different proposers they may not be according to uh, the programs that the funding agency is trying to approach. So if the title is basically related to the program, basically for uh, uh, that is funding agencies trying to accept. So sometimes the title is basically vague. So if the title is basically coming in that particular area, so they may consider if the title is, I uh, mean, not in that particular area, they may not even uh, study your proposal because that is out of the line. I will tell you, I will show you in the in the latest advertisement uh, uh, means advertised by the uh, UP NEDA. Next is starting date and the budget period. So starting date once uh, the proposal uh, may be accepted from the from, from the uh, uh, funding side. So what may be the starting date once you may uh, also know in the previous uh, annual year, what are the like deadline for the uh, submission? and what at what date uh, the result was out so if these things are known to you you may also predict uh, if the your project is basically approached or your project is basically uh, like uh, approved so what may be the starting date because you cannot start your proposal before the uh, proposal is accepted so you should know about the informations that these things happens in a way so suppose in august these are submitting the proposals so result may be coming in october or in november so accordingly, you have to plan your starting date of the pro, uh, starting of your project. And once it is final, so based on that, you have to prepare the budgets. So in the first year of the budgets, what you will purchase, what you will actually, it has to be covered. So your budget period should be clearly uh, like explained in your uh, title page. So from like July 2000, uh, 2024 to this, how much years you have proposed in your, so that has to be covered in that. And total fund requested means that also have a criteria because this title page is, I would say, the first thing that is basically decides your proposal should be reviewed or not. Because if your fund requested is beyond their limits, so they will not even read your project. So the thing is, they also want what are the fund requirement by the proposal. So if your fund is within that limit, they may like process your, your proposal. If it is going beyond their limits, so they may not consider your proposal as well. So the thing is, your proposals uh, should have that fund limits. That is basically comes you after an experience from uh, from yourself or some of the experienced person, or if you are trying to get the information, you are trying to follow up by the different news papers from your different reports or from the from their own sites. So that is basically covered from there. So next is name and address of the institution. At uh, means from where you are trying to uh, means approach the funding agency that everything the PI name, uh, principal investigator name, address, the department, or everything pin code or email, email address and contact number, everything should be there. 
the title page uh, should be professional looking and but it should not uh, do not use the fancy covers or binding i think i we have already covered that part also. next is what should be a good title a good title is the title is that is we have covered that is very important and it should reflect the focus of your project so it no it should not be like of uh, uh, three lines and it should not be of half line so it should have a basic uh, i would say keywords that is basically coming in your project coming in your proposal so the uh, title should be so innovative i would say so effective that you have to spend i should i would say like one day on this part of this you have to take the uh, i mean suggestions from your colleagues you have to take and uh, you have to take the suggestions from your uh, like successful um, uh, granting uh, i mean parts th those who have received the fundings so you have to take care of that the most important words should come first so that is like if you are you have you may have different kind of uh, like uh, uh, innovations like studies on investigations on research on some problems is so these titles should be avoided because these are very uh, like common things that is basically reflect nothing so your if you are developing something your word should be developing on that part you should be write and design and develop on this part so these things should be uh, like start a starting point of title so title basically uh, give an idea to the reviewer give an idea to the funding agencies that this particular proposer is basically uh, very innovative and he has or she has the idea that in a way in, in what way we have to approach the funding agencies so that is the basic impression i would say on the funding part next is table of content table of content basically cover a very brief proposals with few sections that may ordinate uh, ordinarily do not need a table of contents so basically we have as we used to prepare for the chapters for the for the books so this kind of table of content that should not be very uh, like very brief that should be very brief but this should not be detailed that we have to cover different kind of headings for that so long and detailed proposals may require in addition to a table of content there should be a list of illustrations because if the format is too lengthy so sometimes it uh, uh, it should also have some of the figures like uh, graphical figures and list of tables should be there because it may have number of tables as we used to prepare for the thesis as we used to prepare for the dissertations like that we have to prepare a list of illustrations for the figures and table as well so the table of content should list all other major parts and divisions including the abstract even though it is precedes the table of content because the abstract used to be before the table of content so we also have to include by some of the page number or something so that directly we the reviewer can uh, go to that particular point and that can uh, get the information about your proposal so next is the abstract abstract i or i would say the executive summary so what it should have it should have the every proposal should have this one abstract and the other one is it in project proposal this is called oh yeah we have covered this and it should be written in the last once we are trying to say for the research proposals the executive summary is basically at the last of the proposal as we used to do in case of the uh, research papers what we done in the uh, there, there is certain a limit that we have to fix in 250 words we have to cover in 300 words if some guidelines are coming from the funding agencies then we have to um, like follow that strictly but if you are not getting any kind of restrictions from there then you also have to uh, not make it for the two pages three pages abstract should be very concise and effective that basically summarize your project that we have to uh, like uh, see see that part next is uh, we have already covered this and then we come to the introduction part of your proposal so uh, like if you are starting the as we have started today's presentation with some of the key things so your proposal should also be started with some of the statements some of these like ideas some of the like very well known uh, statements from the from the science part from the history part from the from the from from the scientists of the areas in which we are going to study or we are we are going to start the proposal so you should not assume that a leader is familiar means i as i am uh, like taking these presentations many of you may be having a better idea many of you may be having the lot of the experience in the particular field but if i uh, like think about that that you are having the most of the experience 
that I may not be able to deliver what I trying to uh, means uh, trying to say to you all. So the thing is, once you know the people that uh, that the people or the readers or the reviewers have the idea about that particular, then you may miss the basic things. So the thing is, you should assume that the your reader is familiar with your subject. What we are trying to approach, the thing is, we should not provide the vague information. We try to be uh, try to be uh, very uh, uh, effective in a way. The other people who are basically the reviewers. So basically, reviewers are basically selected on a way that they know something about that particular project. So based on that, we, the proposal is submitted to them for the evaluations. So it should be comprehensible to an informed man. That should not be like the people who are basically aware of the uh, aware of the area that can only understand it. So it should be like a layman people. A layman approach can be uh, like, like can be approach for the understanding of that particular problem or the uh, like. Uh, what are the problem statement? What are the solution for that particular? That should be uh, in a way uh, we have to approach. We have to follow the consistency to that, as we have discussed in the first slide. It should be give enough background to the, enable him to place your research problem in a context of the common knowledge, and should show how its solution will advance the field or be important for the some of the means. As we have discussed in the previous slides as well, that your proposal is not just like for the funding agencies, but if any person any layman, any other people who is not familiar with your field. So that can also, if um, is suggested, or we try to understand him about the problem, so that can accept the, 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 the solution that you are providing in your proposal that can be used, that we have not thought about it till now. So if it is there, then the idea is novel, or idea is good. So that need only the good packaging. Do not uh, overstate, but do state very specifically what the importance of your research is. That sometimes what we think is the other people who is reviewer, who may be your funding agencies, that they don't even have any idea about your proposal. So the thing is, we overstate it. Means we try to teach them. The thing is, we should not try to teach them. The thing is, we should specify the things because they know about our statements. So they know about our maybe some basic knowledge about our uh, field. So the thing is, we should uh, try to elaborate those things, but not in a way that we are trying to teach them. <clears throat> so you have to be balanced. You have to be uh, in the in between the lines. So these things should be followed. <clears throat> so what <clears throat> what is the need statement? And based on the need statement, you have to be provide you 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 will provide the solution for that. So what need statement basically cover is. That problem given gives insight into cause of the need. So, what is the problem? And it basically gives you a what are the basically causes for that need. And express bad effect if the need not met. So, if your uh, problem or your uh, like your idea is not uh, like providing the uh, the bad effect, then it will uh, produce a negative effect on the on the uh, on on the organization. Or I would say. And the, uh, the funding agency will see it very effectively once you will try to approach them again. So next is state how urgent the project is needed. So basically that agency that is not based on your requirement, that is also the requirement of the society or that is also the requirement of the things. Uh, as we have seen in the in the Corona period that what are the requirement of the vaccine was there. So that was the urgency that what and how the fundings basically and you try to approach to the funding agencies. The funding agencies not only see the innovations, but they also see the agency of the projects. So that is basically also a part of uh, uh, the evaluation of the uh, proposal. Uh, make clear the scale of demand for a solution. So in a broader way, in a, in a, in a future aspect, you also have to see this particular uh, idea, this particular project basically will scale up uh, in the future. And what may be the demand? What may be the solution for the for the problem, so that you have to clarify uh, in, in the need statements. And so how the project will address this uh, problem. So as we have covered in the uh, previous slides as well, so the local people is not the only people that is get benefited. And that should not be uh, means benefited for the for a particular area, for a particular site. That should be applicable for the different site. That should be universal if it is like that. So that may have a better uh, chances of getting the uh, funding. So what are the background requirement that is needed? So the background requirement that should next section 
so it may also may not be necessary if the proposal is relatively simple so if the format is allowing you to have a very uh, sectional or i would say the simpler way of formation the background information may not be needed but if the introduction or the format allowing you to be elaborative to descriptive then you have to provide the background information if the introduction can present the relevant background in a few sentences then background information is not needed background means the basic things or how the your present idea is basically connected to the existing systems or existing ideas existing literatures so that is that is about that if the previous as we have discussed in this so that is uh, not uh, required literature review should be selective and critical it is very important because for a particular idea for a particular uh, uh, problem statement there is a lot of literature is available but the thing is how effective and how much credential literature is there and how basically it is exactly related to the area that is you are trying to propose that that should be very yeah, means uh, needed so literature part should be uh, like very selective and critical once you are citing them in the in the in the, in the description part that has to be uh, like very informative so you should not cover a like wide a spectrum of the literature that is basically try to distract the uh, uh, means uh, the way of the reviewer because it will distract the reviewer that you are trying to disturb or you are trying to distract the reviewers in a way that you are uh, means uh, making it confusing so if you are confusing the literature the chances of acceptance of your proposal is exponentially reduced i would say so reviewers only want to know pertinent works as we have discussed and your evaluation of them a list of work with no clear evidences that you have studied them and have opinion about their contributors almost nothing to be proposed so you should not provide those informations that have no kind of uh, if your reviewers cannot approach them you should not he cannot retrieve the informations so you should not provide the those kind of literature in it so what could be the description of the proposal proposed research the section of the proposal is comprehensive as we have discussed in the previous part that has to be comprehensive explanation of the proposed research and it is addressed to other specialists in your field means it is not like that a sectional view of the specialists are there but it should address in a broader way <coughs> as we have discussed in the previous part it is the heart of the proposal and the primary concern of it is it is technical reviewers so this is the basic requirement of the reviewers that this part is covered in an effective way the description may need several subsections if it should include that may be aim or objectives that may be methodology because how you will approach how you will achieve those objectives that has to be covered and what may be the results results that may be sometimes may, results may be you have Uh, started working on it on different uh, like in your laboratory some of the results may be uh, like presented in this and uh, conclusions part should be there like <coughs> conclusions that may come after the completion of the project or some of the results that you have there and their uh, conclusion section may be that that we have achieved that much and we will cover and we will uh, try to approach we will try to have those conclusion in the in the futures if the uh, the project is granted so once you are trying to uh, uh, describe your pro proposal so you should be realistic you should not be like imaginary in it you should design a realistic program for your work the, the methodology should be like in a way that you can uh, like follow that that should not be that much strict that you cannot uh, follow that methodology your budget should be like that that you can use that effectively once you are trying to uh, means obtain you, you are trying to cover the objectives of it the research plan should be scaled down to a specific and manageable project so once you are framing your timelines that should be scaled down in a like you are quarterly you are approaching you are monthly you are approaching you are yearly you are approaching so the thing is that should be managed you should not be uh, like have that much of work that the objective should not be that much that you cannot even achieve that that should be like that so as we have discussed list of reference the list of reference to be included it should be placed uh, uh, <clears throat> at the end of the text and a proper uh, style or bibliographic item that has to be followed and you should be consistent whatever style is chosen it is not like since you are choosing some of the style so that has to be followed thoroughly that is not you are choosing one style for the other reference you are choosing different style for the different uh, different kind of different uh, references 
next is the personal requirement because this is the part of your budget that has to be taken care very effectively so personal section usually consists of two parts the first is explanation the why you need that particular personal so explanation should be justified clearly in it <clears throat> next is biological data sheets for each of the main contributors to the project specify how many person at what percentage of time so if some personal is required for only one year you have to specify it that this particular person will work on that particular part of the project and this project it will be completed after this how much percentage will be covered in it so specify how many persons of what percentage of time in what academic categories so eligibility should be there so we need that kind of technical advantages we, we need technical kind of specialist so that has to be mentioned in it <clears throat> so if the program is complex and involve people from different departments suppose this is not the project is not like the only the one department is basically taking care of it so you have to mention the other departments other universities other organizations or the staff and what are the lines of responsibilities of that so you have to make it very clearly you have to that uh, one department will put work on that particular aspect and the other department will work on that different aspect and this kind of personal you need and you will hire that many of persons for that many time that much of time so that has to be clearly mentioned and what are the objectives of hiring those particular personnel that has to be mentioned very clearly. because this personnel will is a major part in, in, in your budget any student participation paid or unpaid should be mentioned because sometimes the uh, students may be from your end so you may be indulging them for your project so you are paying them or they are unpaid so that can be mentioned and you can mention the what are the contributions of these students what are the uh, means what are the exactly they are doing in your project if any person must be hired for the project say so and explain why unless the need of the person not already available within the industry self evident means if you are hiring any person from the outside so if why your university is not why your organization why your institution is not having that kind of person that cannot be that can fulfill that needs so you have to mention that uh, effectively that these persons this kind of specialist is not is not available in our university why we are not uh, using our students for that particular project so you have to mention it very clearly so the next is the budget so budgets are basically uh, developed according to sponsors sponsors or i would say the funding agencies so you as per the university guidelines and that section is an overview of common features what are that so uh, depending on the complex city the budget section may require not only a tabular budget with line item but may also require a budgetary summary summary means uh, as we have covered in the personal sections means why this particular person is needed so similarly for that equipment similarly for the cons, uh, your um, miscellaneous uh, items so this has to be provided why justification of that what is the need of it so that has to be not so only be in the, in a tabular form you have to provide the justification i will show you uh, like a format of that <clears throat> so what are the typical divisions of the budgets are the, that may be as we have discussed personals that may be the equipments that may be some of the supplies that you needed for the completion of the projects and that may be because because of the completion you may need to travel so that travel part is also there and indirect cost that is basically not uh, reflected in the above parts and other categories can be added and based on the specific requirement of the project and based on the specific location of the project and based on the specific like uh, means requirement that can be added in it <clears throat> so budget should be make clear and also as we have mentioned it many times the budget should fit in within the like the uh, the, the the criteria of the funding agencies so this should not overcome of that so if your uh, like budget is not fulfilled in the in the limits of the funding agencies then you have to look after the different funding agencies if your idea your uh, like your prop, uh, statement is too wide that is not covered in a particular funding agencies then you have to approach to different then again you have to follow up the same thing so you have to make very clear how the total of for each category of the expenses are these you have to make it very clear as i i have already covered in the first section that you have to make sure or you may basically give 10% 15% extra to cover up the indirect costs other categories that can be like 
we can use those funds 15 percent 10 percent extra for this kind of categories and that has to be mentioned very clearly that how we are basically trying to reach those expenses so what should be the checklist for the proposed uh, proposal budget item so first one is if you are doing the salaries and wages so that may be academic personals that may be your uh, <clears throat> that may be your uh, uh, research assistants, stipends, some of the training, training grants, consultants, interviews, because you have to conduct the interviews, you need money for that also. Computer programmers, tabulators, secretaries, clerk, ed editorial assistants, technicians, subjects, hourly, hourly persons, staff benefits, uh, salary increase in proposals that extend to a new year because you have to uh, give an uh, increment uh, for any based on the 3%, 4%, whatever the extensions you require and vacations available and or for use these are the first part this is the a part and that comes under the salary and wages the next part is equipments that are for, for the fixed equipments that may be your movable equipments office equipments equipment installation because that is also required some kind of funding so next is <clears throat> next is uh for the table part what you have to do is you have for the administrative part you have the field work and you may have some professional meetings, some of the conferences, some of the like international travels. You need the travel part for that also. And travel for consultations to consult with the other authorities for the experienced people, for the for the different aspects to discuss various issues. And consultant travels, because some of the consultants may travel to discuss the idea to, to make a solution for your proposal. So that can be also be covered in a travel part. Substance, that is different part of it. And automobile rentals, you are taking uh, automobile for the rental that can also be covered in it. And aircraft rental, if you are going abroad or in uh, airspace kind of <coughs> a travel, that can also be covered. Ship rental, if the project involves ship rental also, that it can also be covered. And the D part covers the space rentals. Suppose the space required is there, then you have to take the some alterations and renovations, purchase of periodicals and books, uh, patient reimbursement, if some of the patients get and uh, disturb in it tuitions and fees some of for the training and hospitalization pages charges sub contracts suppose all these funds should be covered in the budget part and make sure this budget should be within the limits of the funding agencies and what are the indirect costs indirect cost that is not covered in the upper part so that is, comes under the uh, indirect cost so uh, once this you have provided uh, the uh, project proposal so you have uh, submitted to the funding agencies. So what basically they see during the evaluations, during the review criteria, what is the basic things that they basically try to evaluate? The first thing is scientific merit. So if your uh, idea, your title page is basically covered and that is entered in the funding agency part. So what basically the first thing they will see is the scientific. It is clearing the scientific merit. If it is clearing, then what they see is the relevance to the program priorities means every program that is basically funding agencies that is specified very clearly that is for the women, that is for, for, for particular areas, that is for particular seed, that is for the weeds, that is for the maize. So if it is comes in that particular program priorities, then only it will be reviewed. Next is novelty to the proposed approach. Suppose it is coming within the priorities. So you, they will see it is novel, it is innovative, it is solving some of the problems of the society, it is probably solving some of the problems of the farmers. So then the novelty is basically checked if it is first two things are fixed. So after that, qualifications of the project personals. So qualifications of the principal investigators as well as what are the qualifications or eligibility that you have provided in your proposal regarding the project personals so that has also be evaluated that that is why you have to take care of the guidelines that is basically fixed by the funding agencies that this much of qualifications should be there for the project personals so that has to be matched if it is not matched so it means you are making some of the information wrong so that you have to uh, means uh, make it very sure that you are matching the qualification that is basically decided by the funding agencies. Next is planning and administration of the project because this is the timeline. You will make a time by chart. You will make a timeline chart. So that will say that this much of objectives will be covered in this particular section of the time. This will be covered in different section of the time. 
if the administration or your guideline or methodology is very clear so that is basically that shows that you have a like a good approach to the to the to the to the problem statement or to achieve the uh, like objective of the project so that has to be there next is whether achievable within the time frame suppose you have framed that much of objectives that is not achieved within suppose we have a one year of time only so you have to make objectives in a way that your objective should be achieved in a one year of the time frame so it is not like you are taking an extension of that suppose you are having a one year of time so you should try to complete you have to approach you have to give a statement in a way that can be completed within one year only <clears throat> so that has to be taken care very effectively so to a degree uh, means uh, you basically uh, uh, you are making reviewer hard so the probability of your proposal being funded decreases exponentially so if you are making your reviewer uh, very hard to understand your uh, like proposal so that may be your problem statement that may be description that may be title that may be budget that may be <clears throat> anything related to the proposal so if you are confusing the reviewers so what it will happen is <laughs> your uh, grant uh, probability will decrease exponentially as it is already there <clears throat> so what basically reviewer need how it should be convinced the first and foremost thing is goal reflect goals reflect major priorities of the program so priority of the program means as i have already covered so if suppose this is for the maize suppose this is for the wheat suppose this is for the rice so if the goals are within that particular programs so that is basically reverse is convinced in the first thing and the second one is if objective are accomplished the status stated goals will be attained so if the objectives are there if they are accomplished effectively so the goals will be attained and if the methodology the stated methodology is followed suppose you have provided a particular methodology and if it is followed effectively then objective will be attained automatically <clears throat> and the expected results what you are trying to expect after the completion of the results are directly related to overall goals and priorities of the system that is basically what are the means what funding agencies has framed before like uh, advertising that particular um, uh, call for the proposals so what are basically the key things that uh, basically leads to rejection of the uh, proposals research proposals or some project proposals so uh, means you basically try to approach some unrealistic equipments as well as the personal requirements so you are saying that i need two personals and the requirements is only for the one persons based on the methodology based on the objectives then that may be unrealistic because the reviewer is an experienced person he knows that how many people are needed for a particular task so if you are approaching in a way so that a proposal have a good chance of the rejections so if it if appears other responsibility would prevent the devotion of sufficient time and attention to the research means the other responsibility responsibilities of the of the pi or the or if you do not have sufficient time so that may also leads that may also reflect in your project proposal so you will not be able to complete that within time frame suppose the time frame is for one year so if other responsibilities are there because you will provide exact information of yourself that i am working as a dean i am working as a director i am working as a assistant professor i am working as a that particular time so that basically give you give an idea to the reviewer that this person may have that much of time that may give you that much of uh, responsibilities to the and that the resources are there so that can be completed so these things basically give an idea to the reviewers that the project may be completed within the time frame the institutional setting is unfavorable means the institutions that is basically uh, who have already approached to the funding agency many times and uh, once they are trying to approach to the funding agencies and the response is not favorable so they are not like responding in a time frame so that may basically give an idea so uh, that is basically avoided so uh, basically funding agency try to avoid those kind of institutions so research grants to the investigations now in force are adequate in scope and amount to cover the proposed research so means we have already different kind of proposals that is uh, means under the uh, in uh, supervision of the investigations that has to be covered so accordingly as we have budgeted our proposal so we have to have uh, budget our time so we should have a solid partnership with the other organizations other members and we should communicate to the funding agencies effectively that this much of goal is achieved 
define your project effectively as we have covered in the proposals and the budget should be innovative as we have started with the first thing that that is the uh, basic thing so 80 percent need uh, planning for the project and 20 percent needed basically writing of the proposal that is the basic thing that is required for that so uh, <clears throat> basic grant applications components so uh, we should have a uh, uh for a more effect competitive applications uh, so what should include is detailed methodology description of the activity detailed budget in, uh, we have covered in the previous slides we have covered these things and last one is that realistic description timeline with benchmark for the deliver what you will deliver after a certain period of time that has to be there next is what are the weak proposals so if they if they do not follow the directions in the guidance so that they, they may be considered as the weak proposals so if they are not proofreads, there are many type of errors. There are different kind of errors. There are technical errors. So they are basically the, considered the weak proposals. So if you have an incorrect or insufficient match with the priorities of the funding agencies, that can also be considered as weak proposals. So if you have a, a lack of coordination and duplication of the activities, if you are replicating the ideas again and again in description, in abstract, in the, in the, in the, in the background information, so that may be considered duplications. And, and if you are submitting after the deadline, suppose you have to send to uh, after a uh, certain period of time, and if your proposal is reached there after the deadline, so that may be considered dull. So if they, that also be considered as the weak proposal, because you are not serious enough, you are working on the closing deadlines, so that is like weak kind of proposals. So uh, what are the weak proposals? Again, so they do not provide adequate description of the PIE relevant past experience and their performance, how they have completed the projects in the previous uh, experience. And <coughs> they demonstrate the work begin and is completed before the grant is to be awarded. So basically, uh, they try to work before that. So that is also a kind of. Uh, so um, what are the uh, what we have to take care is the uh, funders the funding agencies they are not just competitors they are your partners what you have to do is you have to build a relationship you have to respect the timeline you have to understand you have to know their priorities you have to know their interest and you have to discuss the opportunities and also as we have started in the first slides you have to follow up what are the changes in the in their regulations what are the changes in their in the in the rules so you have to take care of that during the completion during the time so these things are basically required and information about the organization that we have already covered and executive summary we have already covered <clears throat> next is what are the different grant funding agencies agencies information so what we have is we have ministry of environment and forest a different uh, kind of uh, i would say uh, time is very limited so uh, there are different agencies dst department of atomic and department of biotechnology spelling is uh, i think there uh, department of Education, Department of Food Processing Industries, I think that may be applicable to the agricultural industry and Department of Non-Conventional Energy Sources because agriculture may help you uh, help by some of the renewable energy sources. So that can also be approached by the some of the wind energy, some of the solar energy that can also be applicable. National Information System for Science and Technology, Technology adopt, uh, Absorption Adoption Schemes, Department of Space, Science and Engineering Councils. These are different kind of agencies that can be approached for the uh, that is science and technology application for rural development because in rural we can approach for the some of the uh, kind of agricultural activities science and technology for weaker sections for the weaker part of a, a area where we can approach start is there and we have the <coughs> that can be applicable for the uh, uh, for the agriculture part R and D medium range weather forecasting and crop weather relationships opportunities for the young scientists. Science and I think everybody knows all, all these uh, uh, agencies, so that can be approached for the uh, <clears throat> for the funding agency funding part. And we have in a, that is that is you all and uh, research promotions council of CSIR is there, and we have uh, a different kind of these are some of the uh, uh, agencies that are, that can provide. This is Ministry of Food and Civil Supply that can also be approached for the funding. And National Oil Seed and Vegetable Oil Development Board that can be approached. Directorate of Rice Research, specifically at it is uh, for the rice, and the Directorate of the Maize Research, NABARD is there. So that can be uh, uh, 
uh, <coughs> considered as the funding agencies. Agriculture and processed food products, the Commissioner of and Secretary Government of Haryana, these are women uh, component plan. <coughs> so uh, some of the international funding agencies also being there that can be approached for the funding. International Foundation for Science and the World Academy of Science and Third World Network for Scientific Organization, United, UNESCO is there, Animal Product and Health Division that can also be approached for the funding for the different ideas. And this last one is the International Federation for Women in Agriculture. So that is very, uh, very good opportunity for the women scientists that is working in the in the area of this agriculture industry that can be that can uh, use this kind of uh, sources. So there are some of the external funding sources, state, territory, fees, and different kind of agencies. So we have different kind of grants that can be foundation or corporate. And uh, I okay. So let me just take you to the another part of the just format of that. So <clears throat> just uh, uh, one second. Suppose this is is it visible to all of you? Hello. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. So uh, you can see uh, this is one of the uh, call for by the UP Neda, Uttar Pradesh Renewable Energy Development Agency. You can see. So uh, <clears throat> what is there is they are basically invitation or application and proposal for R&D in new and renewable energy field. So basically you can see they are eligible. What are the eligible criteria for the for the different institutions? So you can see what are the submission guidelines is there. You can see this highlighted portion. The priority will be given to institutions providing the maximum percentage of funding themselves with UP NEDA covering a lesser percentage. You have to see before applying. This is the uh, latest uh, call for the proposals. So what they are trying to do is they are basically supporting up to a certain percentage. So you should not uh, take for granted like uh, UP NEDA will submit, UP NEDA will give you all the money. Basically. If it is there, so you will submit those proposals which are really effective because you also have to spend some of the money from your organization, from your institutions. Okay. And also, you can see maximum time period for the project demonstration shall be within one year. So, these things like you have to frame your uh, timeline in within one year. So, if your objectives are too broad, you have like uh, given a methodology that cannot be covered in a year. So that is basically directly getting rejected. So these things you have to take care in your mind. Once you are approaching some of the funding agencies, there's some of the guidelines that you have to follow. Other things are like the pro pro project should be for public use. That is not like that is that is applicable for a certain uh, specific period of the time and certain kind of peoples are there. That should be for the public use address issues affecting the public and resolve day-to-day -day problem faced by the people that if these things reflect in your proposal so that is basically considered effectively that are more desirable the next is project contribution should be related to renewable energy power aspect specific to Uttar Pradesh so it is this is UP NEDA so the ideas which you are reflecting that should basically cover or that, that should resolve the problem specifically for the people of the UP so if it is there, so they may consider it more effectively. <clears throat> and the other thing is R&D uh, projects should align with the suggestions for renewable energy projects that are useful and relevant to Uttar Pradesh. Means the ideas which you are trying to propose to the UP NEDA that they are, that may be covering the renewable energy part as well as they are effective should be that that should be effective in the in the in the UP only. You should not. Uh, I, I, you should not give an idea that it may be applicable to some of the uh, oceans that may be some of the uh, shore, uh, uh, near shore uh, parts. So if you are trying to uh, means give an idea regarding the wind energy, so wind energy may not be applicable in the Uttar Pradesh. Solar energy may be there, hydro energy may be there, bio energy may be there. So these energies are related to the U UP. Wind energy may not be applicable for the UP. Ocean energy may not be applicable for the UP, but it it coming under the renewable energy sector. But it is not reflecting the Uttar Pradesh. So that is why ocean energy, wind energy, or any energy that is not basically within the Uttar Pradesh, that should not be provided. So that you have to take care of. Similar to this, we have different kind of uh, like regulations or desirable conditions from the funding agencies that we have to take care during the submission of the project. So you can see what may be the objectives the address cost and technological challenge should be there 
encourage innovation they will encourage the innovation if something is there improve if suppose some of the existing system is there so if the system is basically trying to improve the efficiency if you are proposing some of the things so that has to be there that we, that they will consider support widespread adoption as i have covered in my presentation that should not be specific to a particular space that should not be only for kanpur that should be applicable for the other state other districts as well so that should i uh, mean adopt it very widely so that will basically benefits that will give you an uh, like chances of the uh, getting your get get your uh, proposal to be granted so evaluation criteria you can see relevance and quality of the proposals availability of clear statement of quantified objective and deliverables what you are trying to deliver after completion of the project technical feasibility of the proposal technology readiness level tr level is there so what tr level uh, uh, any technology will achieve after completion of your project so that is also a criteria for the consideration so uh, these are the problem statement means at what in which specifically they are related to so they have already renewable energy see they have said other relevant r and d aspects apart from the above related to new and renewable energy project will also be considered they will consider it but the thing is they are basically specified that we are working on the storage part and we are working on the production part so suppose we have some transmission issues we have some generation issues we can consider if it is related to renewable energy but if your proposal is related to storage so they will give you more preference to it and in storage also if they, this is lithium ion batteries they will give more priorities if it is related to some of the next generation batteries so they will give more preference to it so, so there are different areas some gravity storage plants are there so suppose if the idea is fitting within the scope so this have the more uh, like a uh, chances of getting the acceptance and this is the uh, you can see this is the format pro forma for submission of proposal for ind so this is the project title as we i think we have discussed it very clearly project type it is like grant type or it is research type objective should be there very clearly summary or executive summary or abstract we have called it total cost is there this is the title page <coughs> duration I, I think we have discussed from july this year to this year or from, uh, january to this year principal implementing organization this is hbtu kanpur or something your organization is there category in which category you following collaborating you are collaborating some of the organizations uh, means to complete this so these are the details of your pi co pi what are the share of your participating institution in your total cost you have to mention the percentage suppose you are uh, taking 1 crore so 40 lakhs you are expending and taking you are taking 60 lakhs from the different or from the uh, up neda so that has to be mentioned clearly and you can see here uh, uh, detail of various cost component uh, you ha you have to mention the equipment you have to that that is indigenous so you have to import it what may be the estimated cost and what is the justification of what is the justification of using that equipment that has to be also be there i think we have covered it very well and uh, next is you have to also have to provide a certificate from the pi and that is basically provided by your organization and uh, and then infrastructure facilities that is available to you that workshop is there if you try to manufacture some of the things the workshop is there yes or no if it is not required water and electricity standby power supply laboratory these are the things that is there so that has to be covered very effectively and justification should be provided for that so uh, next is uh, this is also bio data of pi and co pi they also have formatted it so they will not require other information so the things which is required like your name your date of birth basically this give you how much experience you may have academic qualification you are appro means properly qualified area of expertise this is falling within the priorities of the funding agencies or not and experience awards some of the awards is there publications that may be books research papers and patents and list of publications list may be from the last 10 years you may be having the experience of 20 years but they are needing only for the 10 years so that is basically their requirement list of project completed indicating briefly title sponsoring agency so this shows that how much experience you have to complete a project and detail of material prototype developed already developed in the past so what position you have you were the principal investigator what about the, your role where you were working over there what was the duration what are the area of it so that is needed so I think this is the basic idea, I uh, mean, about the format, about the information, what are the budget things, what are the timelines. So I think uh, uh, that is uh, over uh, from my side. So uh, 
thank you so much uh, uh, for this time i think uh, i've not taken uh, much beyond the limit so uh, okay no worries sir we can spare a few minutes for you um if there so are if any questions so we can uh, like take on it yes anyone wants to ask something <laughs> if you want to ask something you can ask yeah i think we have a scope of maybe a couple of questions or queries mm -hmm. So, is there any question? Uh, is there any question? Because actually, I think it was quite uh, nicely elaborated, and uh, all the scientists who are participating in this training program, they are going through this process quite often. And uh, I'm sure that everybody of them has submitted one or the other project at uh, different points of time. And uh, mostly in our field, there are numerous funding agencies, but uh, the most common funding agencies are DBT, then DST, then of course Indian Council of Agricultural Research, then Ministry of Food Processing. We also have a SES fund of ICAR, and uh, of course uh, we are having some international funding organizations like uh, ACIR Australia, and uh, uh, we uh, some of our, the people they get the funds from USDA also. So people they are uh, regularly putting up their proposals, but definitely. Uh, today's lecture was quite well explained and it was quite easy to understand. Still, if there's any query from any quarter, I request the concern to kindly raise, raise his or her hand so that we can invite for uh, to raise your voice. Or you can put your question in the chat box also. Okay. I don't see, as of now, I don't see anything in the chat box. There may be one thing if they, they know everything. So that is that i think that may be the part Look, actually uh dr gaurav i think uh, it was a kind of refresher for all of them because yes, uh, yeah but as i told you that many of them are putting up their proposals so it was a kind of refresher and it was a must because uh, uh, then we are also having some early career scientists in this group as well as yeah. uh, some to be scientists in this group okay. so this was a kind of eye opener for them that uh, what is to be done and what is to be followed and what what is not to be done so this was just a kind of checklist what they should so yours it was a wonderful lecture in fact thank you thank you so much uh that was that sentence was basically for me uh i i was basically uh trying to put in a way that uh i have delivered uh what i have uh basically uh, uh tried to uh think so uh, uh i i put that sentence because i have delivered uh in a way that that should be there or uh, they have not <laughs> means got it what i try to deliver <clears throat> okay, so Dr. Patil, Dr. M. D. Patil wants to say something. Uh, yeah. I just, I just, I just uh, wanted to compliment for a wonderful presentation. I just wanted to uh, have some suggestions. So for example, sometimes uh, we have different funding agencies uh, in our agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. How relevant it is uh, to submit a, a proposal to two different funding agencies, uh, just in case uh, in one of the funding agencies, if our project gets denied. To hmm. save the timing, uh, is it relevant to go for uh, another funding agency, or we have to wait until the results come from the one funding agency and then wait and then submit to another uh, funding agency? I mean, I'm just I just wanted to know from your experience what's the best way. Uh, uh, thank you for this uh, question, and uh, I would say uh, this is basically usually nowadays people also follow uh, once they do uh, for the uh, submission of their research papers because of the uh, not having that much of patience, I would say. <clears throat> so um, I would uh, suggest in a way to be, because at the early start of the career, as we all uh, basically are, so uh, we should avoid to uh, means try to submit the same project on the, on the different funding agencies simultaneously, because uh, this uh, comes under the uh, like non-ethical part, I would say. Morally, we should not do that. <clears throat> And also, uh, uh, I would suggest that is not covered in the presentation that uh, we also have to check um, the, the the similarity of the project once we are trying to submit it during the uh, for the any funding agencies. 
so if you are submitting that proposal to any funding agency i would suggest to avoid to uh, submit at different uh, funding agencies simultaneously it is not like that you have a single idea you may be having different ideas isn't it so if you are having different ideas so uh, that basically you try to submit different idea to the different agency if it is uh, possible but i would suggest not to submit the same idea to different funding agencies that is my personal uh, okay. suggestion for you thank you thank you <clears throat> Actually, Dr. Patel, uh, some of the funding agencies, it actually it's uh, the same case as far as submission of paper is also concerned to different exactly. journals. Yeah. Uh, in yes. fact, uh, many journals, uh, uh, as well as some funding agencies, they have a minimum requirement of declaring that you have not submitted this project exactly. or manuscript anywhere else. Yes. Because uh, I am telling my own experience that because I am on board several uh, journals, uh, maybe more than 18, 20 journals on the okay. real board. So, personally, we see this column actually. <laughs> yes. Whether it has been submitted somewhere else also. Yes. Or actually, uh, the, the, the implication of this thing is only that uh, we want to judge whether the person is serious in publishing in our journal or not. Yes, yes. Or actually, he's just uh, it's a hit and trial and he's submitting it to three journals simultaneously and wherever he catches. So, here we assume that the scientist or the researcher is quite well aware that where he's submitting the proposal. What are the priorities of the funding agency or the journal? Yes. And accordingly, very consciously, he's submitting the proposal there. So this okay. is the idea. Okay. And also uh, nowadays, uh, I would suggest the uh, uh, no AI is there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <He> got... <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have chance to be uh, just go out of it. Exactly. So they will put it. And the consequence of this would be uh, uh, dramatical. Yeah. And then, Dr. Gaurav, I will tell you that there has been a good number of retractions uh, during the last uh, couple of years. Yes. And the reason was because we studied the modus operandi of the people there. What they were doing is they were preparing maybe two or three reviews of similar kind or two or three papers of similar kind and mm -hmm. submitting them simultaneously so that it was not caught in plagiarism. <clears throat> yes. Later on, it was detected and then the paper had, papers had been, they had, it was detected and the papers were detected. So this is actually so uh, considered uh, as a malpractice. What it has done is they have a continuous black mark on their career. Yeah. yeah. So they can remove it throughout yeah. their career. So uh, you can eat less. <laughs> yeah. So but properly cooked. <laughs> yeah. In a good way. Actually, it's considered as a malpractice, in fact. Yes. Uh, exactly. And this is a good tool if it is used effectively. AI is there. So, and nowadays, if you are checking your reports on plagues, I mean, this is turned it in or some of the sources. So, that also give you a part of the AI that how much it is matching. So, uh, you, you should take care of it effectively. Even uh, nowadays, the students, even in our university or everywhere, they are even writing an application by using that chat GPT. And that can be, you can, like, in the first view, you can get it. That it is written by the chat GPT, and we just find out what we can do. We are, we, we are discouraging our kids <laughs> to use AI and chat GPT as of now. Yes, yes. they have a tendency actually when they are con this, uh, using internet. So yes. we are discouraging them that you should not, as of now, use oh, chat sir. GPT and AI for your <laughs> reducing their widening their uh, like mind how to. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. So it was very nice. And all have heard very nicely. There was <laughs> so that was good. Okay, so uh, I think it was a, a really. It's a, it was a, Dr. Gaurav. It was a well delivered lecture. In fact, it was a, uh, essentially a refresher, yes. and it was much required because already we had one more lecture in the beginning itself about how to write a project and report. Okay, and it was uh, it supplemented that thing. Okay. And I'm sure that uh, the audience have really, they have definitely benefited from your experience as well as your, the way you delivered it. Actually, it was very nicely delivered. I must congratulate you. Thank you. Sir. So, thank you. Agrima, are we ready for the plenary now? You're, you're not audible. Sorry, I was talking on the mute. So, uh, sir, uh, let me conclude the sessions, all the sessions that we had uh, for, from past 14 days. So uh, the sessions that we saw. Sorry, uh, uh, one minute, one minute. Uh, uh, all the people are connected now who are meant to be there in the plenary session from your side, uh, from SBQ side. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ma'am oh, is also there. Uh, yeah, so like, is there. Everyone is, is there. Starting it now.
सॉरी सर डू वी स्टार्ट द प्लेनरी सेशन नाउ मैम Yes, yes, we can obviously start with the plenary session, sir. So Rashi, ma'am has uh, told me to uh, conclude this. Okay, so uh, we can uh, go ahead. Uh, Dr. Saini has delivered the lecture very nicely. Okay, so uh, many thanks to him. Right, he's a colleague of mine from the same university. Okay, so yeah, so uh, uh, in the in the uh, today's plenary session, so. and the uh, i'll just conclude that the workshop began with a session on microsoft word okay we started this and there were participants learned uh, the essential and advanced features for creating and formatting the professional documents fine uh, this was followed by a session on powerpoint okay. and which focused on designing uh, impactful presentations with the uh, slides animation and multimedia elements uh the next session covered uh, report writing and project writing which emphasized on the clarity the organization of the content the presentation of the data etc then uh, the there was a session on Uh, uh on excel uh, which started with basic functions to complex data analysis followed by visualization automation etc then there was an introduction to machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, and uh, highlighting the transformative applications which can be used in agriculture and further possibility of the research that can be done and the uh, uh, agglomeration of uh, ai with the agricultural industry so overall uh, the number of participants were 168 the average attendance also was good 82% the uh, we had a blend of uh, people from different different states so notably the number of states were around 23 the uh, ladies and gents ratio was also 43 is to 118 so there was approximately 37% of the participants were ladies uh thanks to everybody who has attended this session and the objectives that that we achieved were uh Uh, the there was an enhancement in the existing knowledge that people had uh, so uh, they they gained a, a more deeper understanding on the latest advancements in agricultural and uh, including precise farming iot and artificial intelligence driven solutions uh, there was a lecture which could uh, help them enhance their skills by giving them hands on sessions uh, networking opportunities so people could uh, connect with industry experts researchers uh, collaborations was possible then there were many many sessions in which problem solving techniques were also discussed uh, understanding of the policies the government policies the as dr saini uh, told us how to write a good project okay so many times we to uh, send projects and unfortunately many a times they fail so i could understand what can be the uh, reasons behind the failure of such projects okay so and uh, and uh, what are the um, uh, future ready farming concepts that can be utilized so uh, i um, thank everybody all the participants who participated in this as we bring this uh, enriching two week workshop on empowering agriculture through technology uh, it is my privilege to extend our heartfelt thanks and and uh, first and foremost uh, we wish our deep gratitude to to the two conveners dr aditya gar and dr rashi agrawal for their visionary leadership and tireless efforts in making this event a success and uh, we are also very grateful to all the speakers for their insightful presentation on various subjects and, and their expertise has uh, really enriched our understanding and discussions participants you were very enthusiastic uh, kept asking questions which put the uh, speakers on toe and then it was it was kind of very interactive because people used to ask question came up with their own ideas so we had a very enriching experience as well we are always there for you the mail ids are available so we can always be reached out at our own mail ids the mail ids are available and the at the uh, institute website as well fine so thank you thank
thank you thank to everybody for attending the workshop all the participants all the distinguished speakers who took out their valuable time to deliver the lecture thank you thank you ma'am uh, <laughs> so uh, ma'am uh, you are uh, uh, assistant professor in computer science department at hbtu kanpur and ma'am you have bring your valuable expertise and insights discussion today and the first lecture we had uh, there also you were there and this is the last lecture the last session here also you are here ma'am so and a lot of thanks to you for being available at such a short notice ma'am uh, so uh, now over to you sir yeah okay thank you and uh, sir uh, i'm so sorry sir yeah. before uh, you move forward sir i would just like to add a note to all the participants before they start asking questions to me that uh, whatever glitches are there in the attendance sheet uh, whatever disparities are there please do not worry uh, kindly send us the modifications that you need and be patient as we are working to address all the necessary adjustments and it will be reflected in one or two days so it might take uh, another uh, couple of days and please be patient with it thank you sir now it's it's over to you sir thank you thank you agrima uh, very good afternoon to all of you uh, uh, this is the last session actually the plenary session of this uh, uh, training program of more than 2 weeks and before i say something i would like to have some feedback from a few participants and i would request them to be be honest in their feedback actually because this will give us an opportunity to improve further and uh, yeah if they want to appreciate kindly appreciate genuinely if they have some concern kindly raise it because this is an in house uh, program and uh, this is for the betterment of all and it has been a cross learning for all uh, first of all i would like to invite dr sunita behra from odisha university of agriculture and technology and she is uh, located at our uh, barhampur station in odisha over to dr sunita behra are you there yes sir yeah please and yes, i would sir. like to request all the speakers to kindly switch on their uh, camera as well Good evening, be sir. specific yeah uh, only 2 minutes ha uh ha -huh. yes sir uh, sir thank you for giving me this opportunities to share my feedbacks it is a 19 days long uh, workshop program consisting of 14 sessions and uh, 14 days uh, uh, practically uh, in among which we could learn introduction to document preparation and what is the purpose of latex writing winning uh, projects and reports use of smart criteria common mistakes we do in uh, planning a project uh, where to use the gantt chart introduction to powerpoint data collection and compilation use of sensor in data use of drones iot sensors uh, so many things are regarding excel and its basic functions uh, use of lookup and if statements and uh, python libraries uh, such as pandas ttest if states anova uh, data science and uh, artificial intelligence precision irrigation management and the complex analysis of complex agriculture Uh, prediction of crop yield using sample data set regression in uh, agriculture and uh, regarding your uh, uh, that uh, uh, when you gave the delhi with that uh, lectures on modernization in crop research which was really helpful uh, for us regarding that architectural development of mung bean in root system it was very inter interesting sir and regarding http uh, techniques uh, and design to enhance the breeding progress by collecting large scale data and the drone based monitoring in crop research future trends in agriculture technology application of robotic system in large scale iot uh, sensor use predictive analytics uh, using ai and machine learning in agriculture to predict crop diseases for the spread vertical farming in approach to sustainable agriculture hydroponic techniques satellite imaginary gmos and today's session was the project present, uh, project uh, presentation and discussion which is really a need for us how to present a project so that it will draw the attention of funding agency and we can get its sanction uh, finally this 19 days workshop help helped us to refresh our basic ideas sir about statistic statistic analysis along with expose us to high level statistic analysis sir with its interpretation and uh, uh, uses in modern agriculture my heartfelt thanks to our pc sir for organizing such a wonderful workshop sir Uh, one uh, thing i want to add sir when there was a critical uh, analysis of the statistic 
online program one or two days uh, two to three days i think which was very hectic and critical for analysis of the statistic program basically on those programs sir if you further uh, your kind uh, valuable time is permissible then please organize at if not so long prolonged period at least a minimum period of five days at a regular interval for the statistic uh, analysis sir. because basics we know but uh, online, sometimes see this uh, internet disturbance and so many things are there. At least five days, hands-on practical program, all those things, if it will, it can be done, that will be more uh, valuable for us, sir. And uh, once again, uh, this is all from my side. And once again, my thanks to our PC, sir, Asimam, Agrimam, and all who put their precious time and interest to make it successful. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sunita. Uh, you, you will nicely summarize the training program as well as you gave your views. Now, I would like to request Dr. M. D. Patel from University of Agricultural Sciences, Harvard. Uh, uh, yeah, please, over to you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you so much for uh, giving this opportunity to share our uh, uh, feedback. In fact, uh, honestly speaking, when I attended the first day of uh, this training, uh, uh, the basic uh, world was started, and then I thought, uh, it is too basic, uh, you know, something like that, I thought. And then after that class, when I attended the test on that day, then I came to know that there are so many things which still we are not aware of. And then that day, uh, actually, in fact, uh, that the first day actually brought a lot of seriousness in all of us that there is something which uh, new things which we can uh, really learn from this workshop. And uh, that that's the day actually which uh, I, I took it very seriously that though we, are, we think that uh, these are regularly we are using but there is something which uh, we are not aware of and uh, that seriousness actually uh, you know it was in everybody's uh, every uh, attendees and then uh, i just say that the second uh, day lecture on project writing and today's so this was a as our uh, uh, respected pc sector it's a perfect complementation of these two that was wonderful to uh, listen to these two on project writing and i i especially emphasize on uh, the sessions on use of Excel actually, because this is the most useful tool for all of us uh, in agriculture sector because we play a lot of uh, uh, lot many times with the data. So we generate a lot of data and uh, how to analyze that properly and put them in a very meaningful way. Uh, in fact, this is very useful uh, for us and uh, we learn many new things and, and I'm sure there are still uh, uh, there are, um, you know, we need uh, some more detailed uh, uh, trainings on this because probably as uh, we discussed that in only two hours, we cannot become uh, master into this. Uh, I'm sure uh, Aditya Prasad sir has already said that on some of the aspects, there will be an advanced training. Uh, probably that will be like physical training and hands on. So that type of training uh, will be useful. And another thing uh, which was very insightful uh, uh, in this training was lot of things we learned on uh, this new modern tools and techniques like AI, machine learning. Uh, though in every day our uh, breeding program or research program we, will not, we may not be using now, but this gave a lot of insights to us uh, and it created a lot of interest among us. So that if you if you use such techniques, how we can do better, how we can precisely do the decisions and uh, how the data driven decisions we can make. Uh, in crop improvement. So that was a wonderful thing which, uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, you know, opened a uh, uh, new avenue for all of us. And uh, and uh, I also give a special uh, compliments and thanks to the lecture by Aditya Pratap, sir. Uh, so holistically, he has covered uh, many aspects uh, which are very much relevant uh, to our day-to-day -day activity. Uh, so like this, it, this entire program became a new routine to us, sir. Uh, every day from 12th of August and uh, okay, now okay. I think so after the session, uh, sir, I, I uh, like what one request I make first and then I'll give my suggestion, sir. Yeah, very quickly. Uh, probably, very quickly. Yeah, probably like uh, uh, some of the resource persons will be bothering again, like Saurabh Agarwalji, Rashi Agarwalji, and uh, Agrimaji on some of the aspects which will be using the techniques. I'm, I'm sure will be bothering and I request for kind support uh, even after the workshop. And so my uh, suggestion is that uh, some of the uh, advanced uh, tools which uh, were covered, uh, probably we need uh, physical training with hands-on, uh, like for maybe for example, a weeks or 10 days exclusively, uh, example like Python, using Python. Uh, if that can be done, it, uh, it will be more useful for us, sir.
Okay. Uh, that's all from my side, and I'm uh, I extend my sincere gratitude to uh, everyone, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Sir, for your suggestion as well as your observation. Now over to Dr. Nishi Keshari from Raj Dr. Rajendra Prasad Central Agricultural University, Pusa, Bihar. Dr. Nishi Keshari. I am pronouncing it right, Dr. Nishi. It is Keshari or Keshari. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, madam, sorry, sir. Should I, should I pronounce Keshari, sir? Keshari. So, I am always pronouncing you Keshari. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's okay, sir. Uh, good evening. Good evening, everyone. So, this is Dr. Nishi Keshari, Associate Professor of Nematology. So, I am posted at Department of Plant Pathology and Nematology at uh, Dr. RPCAU Pusa Samastipur Bihar. So, I am already associated with Acrip Mula, Pizanthi, Chickpea and Acrip Weed since my joining. And now I am also PI in Acrip Nematodes since 2018. And this is the first time I had such a wonderful workshop under Acrip to keep us updated with the recent techniques in agriculture. I must say we enjoyed a lot with the lectures as well as the hands-on skills we practiced. This workshop had an excellent structure and presentation, I must say. And the lectures were so well choreographed from simple learnings of Word, PPT, Excel, data, writing projects, to the modern techniques on AI, machine learning, and advanced trends in agriculture. And we had great visuals also. All sessions are highly comprehensive and informative. I am really grateful to the uh, to Dr. Aditya Pratap sir for organizing such a highly insightful lectures and I am also grateful to the scientists from HBTU Kanpur for their present teaching and responding to all our queries. Generally, this was one of the best workshops I have attended and lastly, thanks to Dr. Aditya Pratap sir for giving us opportunity for uh, sharing this, our feedback and uh, I am looking forward for such a uh, special workshop on some life statistical tools and uh, advanced training. Uh, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Dr. Nishi, for sharing your reviews about the training. Now, I would invite Dr. Mathias Gan. Uh, he is uh, posted at uh, TRRI, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University at Adoturai Center. So, I will be visiting that center after three days, Adoturai. Dr. Mathias Gan, over to you. Yes, sir. Very good afternoon, sir. Can switch on your video also so that we can see you? Ah, yes, sir. Yes. Otherwise, how I will recognize you when I reach there? Yes, sure, sir. Yeah, very good afternoon. Uh, myself, Dr. S. Madhyalagan, working as Associate Professor of Plant Pathology at Tamil Nadu Rice Research Institute, Adhari. Now, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the program coordinator of Agri Curry Pulses to give the opportunity to participate in the, the wonderful uh, two week workshop, online workshop. So, this workshop is mainly concentrated on three broad categories. The, the first foremost one is document presentation from basic of Word to Excel and other advanced. And then for the second one is data collection and data management. So, so this data collection and data management, Excel as well as basic of the Excel, I remember my college days for the statistical uh, courses. Some basics we had learned in the, during my undergraduate program. Mm, uh, and the, is pro, the data collection and management really very interesting. We have learned many things from the Excel, opera, uh, Excel options. And then for the third broad category is application of computer science in agriculture. So in this agriculture, nowadays there are uh, several developments uh, is occurring from starting from the data sciences in the Python, uh, Pandas, agriculture uh, library, and then for uh, basic of uh, testing, teachers, chef test, and over. And then finally, we have uh, learned many things for the artificial intelligence in agriculture as well as drone application. And also our PC studies they very detailedly explain this lectures is very interesting about the STPP and other uh, relevant activities. So finally, I would like to thank uh, the program coordinator of ICRIP Curry Pulses as well as STPU Consort. Once again, I would like to thank uh, all the participation on behalf, on my own behalf of thank you everyone for uh, uh, the conducting the wonderful uh, online workshop. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Th thank you, Dr. Mathias. Now, the last uh, feedback is, uh, I, I, if I, I don't know if Dr. Malik Arjun is there. He is actually in Kashmir right now. He is traveling. Sir, I am there, sir. Okay, great. So, you have you have visited the trials also today. Kindly share your reviews very quickly. Okay, sir. Thank Only you one for giving you. me. This. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, giving this opportunity to share my uh, opinion. 
in fact uh, after the online training of pathology this is the one of the best training i can say the online training i had personally and for all the asrp kharif pulses team it was really a wonderful experience and especially uh, when the training started with word file i was wondering where we are going to end up <laughs> but the, but yeah. after the word and powerpoint is over when the excel started we realized that the our train is uh, in fact uh, until in our life it was not in a right track you may not believe uh, in one or the other visits when i was moving in these days people uh, they were saying like modi ka session hai chhodna nahi sakte to attend karna hai so apart from the regularity and punctuality it is the interest to what the way this training created in almost 99 or 110 participants were there throughout the 17 days or up to 19 days i can believe and that is the kind of interest this training created and once the excel sheet started we realized that how far behind we are in fight in spite of our age and experience in our institutions and in our actual life so that is how the training content was as the training progressed uh, and it was very excellent especially already many of us have shared the experience and requirement also the development of application, use of Excel sheet in so many calculations, and as the training progressed regarding the phenotyping and uh, the converting of phenotyping into a data, and that to programming for our requirement to I mean interpretation of data, it was all uh, I mean excellent, and I'm definitely sure that many of us and every one of us have got benefited personally. I am very much thankful to our PC sir for uh, making this training program successful. And also on behalf of all of us, I thank Dr. Rashi Agarwal and Dr. Agrima, uh, who is also doing her PhD. And I'm sure that this training program will, will link the Harcourt University with EICRP Kharif Pulses. And definitely uh, Mayur and uh, our another colleague, they have expressed what we need in future. Definitely we will be keep on knocking the doors of your university, one or the other scientist, especially in data analysis, compilation, and I am very happy that uh, uh, today we had a good lecture on the uh, project uh, preparation and writing. And even we had a good uh, experience in one earlier classes also. So it was a really a wonderful learning for all of us. And I once again thank the uh, our PC sir and the ACRP entire team and also the uh, organizer from the Art Court University. Thank you one and all. Thank you very much for giving me this uh, short time. In fact, I was traveling and I was thinking how best I can make sure that I attend at least the last two minutes in this session. Because from traveling to one station at Scott, is cost, which is a 49 kilometer away from the main Shalimar campus. But somehow I'm happy that I could make it to attend. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Malik Arjun. Dr. Malik Arjun is right now working in Gulbarga, Karnataka, and he's traveling right now in Srinagar, Kashmir. So he's enjoying actually there along with his job. Thank you, Dr. Malik Arjun. Uh, yeah, so now we have reached to the last leg of our program. If there is still anybody who is voluntarily interested to say anything, kindly raise your hand very quickly, one or two persons. Otherwise, we will proceed with the last leg. Is there anybody who wants to say anything specifically or suggest anything? Suggest anything? Dr. Sunil Kumar, actually, sir. Sir, actually, what is this training interest? ऐसा इंटरेस्ट है सब जो हमारा फिजिकल मोड में होता है ना उसमें भी इंटरेस्ट नहीं आता हमने कई बार देखा है सब कई बार हम यहां ट्रेनिंग करते हैं इंडक्शन ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम और कहीं भी ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम करते हैं तो वहां पे अगर 30 पार्टिसिपेंट होंगे तो उसमें से 20 आएंगे यहां हमने देखा है सब 12 तारीख से स्टार्ट हुआ आज हमारा 30th तारीख आज सुबह 20 डेज के अंदर जो नॉन वो जो जो हमारे जो छुट्टियों को छोड़ के डा साहब जो हमारा जो वर्किंग था इसमें 117 116 115 ये हमारी अटेंडेंस रही रही है तो इसका मतलब जिन जिनका इंटरेस्ट जो इंटरेस्ट इसलिए था क्योंकि ये एक तो जो सारे टॉपिक थे डा जैसे टॉपिक बहुत ज्यादा कवर किए अगर इसमें डा थोड़ा सा जो टॉपिक थोड़े कम करके अगर हमें उनको दो दो बार करते हैं ना तो हम ज्यादा सीख पाते सीखा तो अभी भी बहुत ज्यादा परंतु टॉपिक ज्यादा कवर हुए तो इसलिए डा साहब ट्रेनिंग बहुत हम ये जाते हैं डॉक्टर इसको कंटिन्यू भी अगर हो आ, जैसे एक्रीबोन ये अब भी अपना रवि पल्सी फिर थ्री पल्सी जो रवि पल्सी में जो हो तो उस टाइम भी अगर कंटिन्यू कर सको तो डॉक्टर इसको हम करना भी चाहेंगे डॉक्टर अरे डॉक्टर इसको जो आपने जो 
दो घंटे का क्या है सर जैसे अभी आप कह रहे थे इसका कोई बेनिफिट नहीं मिलता क्योंकि सर टाइम तो हमने दिया ही है दो घंटे का अगर इसको आप तीन घंटे या चार घंटे करते तो हमें इसका बेनिफिट भी मिल जाए क्योंकि सर जो मेरा जो मानना है जो आगे आने वाला टाइम है जो भी ट्रेनिंग है वो सारी ऑनलाइन ही होने वाली है शायद फिजिकल ना हो क्योंकि हमारा जैसे आप आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस आ जाएंगे तो उसमें डॉक्टर जो भी जो भी आगे ट्रेनिंग है वर्कशॉप है या हमारा जो सेमिनार है जो आने वाले पांच या दस साल के बाद शायद फिजिकल ना हो तो हम इसमें ही चले जाएंगे सारा अपने ये जो ठीक है डॉक्टर थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच anybody else or now straight away i will yes, take two minutes dr pushpatam aniya from he is at patan yeah. center of yeah. kerala university <laughs> the uh, southmost corner of india yeah please so, be quick uh, training uh, for the past uh, from uh, for the 12th of august to this day it is uh, highly wonderful having many areas we can able to learn it especially the machine learning artificial intelligence uh, data science as well as uh, robotics uh, so in agriculture uh, it has given a insight uh, to learn uh, which we do not know earlier and anyway, it is highly useful for us to uh, learn this type of uh, new technologies thank you very much sir for giving an opportunity and uh, this training for us uh, to learn uh, something which we do not know earlier thank you thank you thank you dr pushwathman okay i think now uh, i will take two minutes kindly bear with me thank you very much so uh, again a uh, very good afternoon to all of you uh actually when we started this training when we uh, initiated the idea of organizing this kind of training program it was uh, the idea was conceived at our annual group meeting <clears throat> initially which was held at bark mumbai uh, last year for the spring summer season so at that time because what i noticed is when we were making presentations when our pi myself even we were making presentations and we were analyzing the data for our annual reports and when i was going through the historical and legacy data of all over the annual reports after joining myself joining as the project coordinator i experienced that we were lacking in certain things the most missing things actually which are available on our desktop but we are not using those tools even myself i was not using those tools then uh, we could further improve our powerpoint presentations and we could we could actually judge that probably this kind of basic training is required. we are quite uh, ahead in our subjects we are doing very good research but this kind of training is required so at that time i had discussed this idea with our honorable uh, additional director general dr sanjeev gupta and uh, he was kind enough and he suggested me yes this kind of things are required in aicrp these are lacking in aicrp and people are not taking such kind of initiatives and you should immediately go about it then uh, we had another meeting at hyderabad our annual group meeting for the kharif season and uh, there uh, i was uh, sure that we have to do it now uh I, actually i must here congratulate and uh, appreciate sincerely dr rashi agarwal actually we were working together in uh, earlier in some up uh, government funded uh, schemes and i had come into contact with her at that point of time she was having another project and i was having a different project and uh, i knew that she can be one of the best persons to associate in this type of uh, things and what we did specifically is we wanted that the trainer should not be from the nas system and icr system they should not know agriculture actually because when we have to, because that kind of training we routinely organize and when we have those kind of trainers they are actually uh, quite typified and they will use those examples only they will talk only about chickpea moong bean urad bean likewise and we will have routine kind of lectures i also ensured that the trainer should not be from biological sciences whether they should be hardcore engineers computer science scientists so that they are not actually uh, they are not actually knowing what we are doing and they are knowing what we are doing in fact so in that way hbtu hardcore butler technological uh, university it is actually very reputed organization and it is quite age old organization i don't know if the exact uh, in so more than 100 years now more than 100 years old even older than the iit and you see many alumni in different iits are from hbtu earlier it was known as hbti a very reputed organization and we have a very high confidence on this organization we roped into i called dr rashi and she was so kind enough to accept our invitation she immediately came to my office with dr imran i remember and then we had an elaborate discussion and the idea was conceived within two days she gave me a detailed proposal and then we discussed the proposal with our honorable dr t r sharma the honorable deputy director general crop sciences at uh, our headquarters in new delhi and he was so happy and so kind enough to give us the permission to organize such kind of training program so it, it is the, uh, in this way we organized this training program of course i was a bit uh, bit skeptical in the beginning that uh, are we going to be successful in such kind of program and what will be the response 
and you all will be surprised to know that we had initially targeted 100 participants but when we started getting the response i had to request dr rashid to purchase the google paid version for 150 participants and when i closed the registration at 150 participants we announced that now registrations are closed even then 18 particip more participants just sneaked in and they somehow we, we closed the payment system we closed the google form system and still we had 18 more participants to accommodate and we had to increase uh, the capacity of our google link even then i got 32 interest after 160 day, two, uh, uh, 68 participants in the agreement i got 32 more calls to accommodate so we said that enough is enough because ultimately the group becomes unmanageable and then ultimately we had 168 registered participants so this was an overwhelming response and it increased the responsibility also on us because now we were at the test and uh, with the response i got over last uh, 14 15 days uh, around 19 days from the people but in my personal whatsapp to call and all and all your feedback as well. Now I know that this was a wonderful training program and we have been successful in the target. And we are now more convinced that this type of training programs are required, number one. And number two, as suggested by Dr. Patel, Dr. Nishi and uh, Dr. Sunita Behra also, that a special training program on the advanced version for selected candidates in offline mode. It is required, and uh, already Dr. Mallik Arjun, uh, he he in fact uh, is insisting me since a long time to organize such kind of training program with IESRI, Indian Agricultural Statistical Research Institute. So we are discussing that, and uh, I will definitely try to organize offline training program also for the participants. Or otherwise, uh, we have another channel also of uh, summer course and the winter course which are funded by ICAR. So we will also try for that. And I would maybe I would request some of our partners who are sitting here to take an initiative to organize such kind of program in collaboration with ICR in the form of a 21 day summer school or a winter school or a 10 day short course. So this will be a wonderful opportunity and we will extend all kind of support. And we can have faculty from HBTU as well as, uh, for example, Dr. Prabhakar from IIT and all these people, and they will be supporting us there. Probably by that time, Agrima will also be free to join us as a, as a full-time trainer. Thank you. So this has been a wonderful cross learning experience for us also. and the. The, the most wonderful thing which has happened is that probably with HBTU, this is the first of such kind of our uh, collaboration, actually. I don't know other people might be having collaboration with them. But for the AICRP, I think this is the first kind of first such kind of uh, collaboration with them. And this has really worked well. And it has opened the doors for the further collaborations, which will be definitely uh, useful to us. I take uh, a pleasure, a privilege and opportunity to convey my sincere thanks first to Honorable Deputy Director General Crop Sciences ICR, Dr. T.R. Sharma, sir. And uh, in fact, uh, he is a great mentor, a great guardian, a great officer who in fact understands the needs, HRD needs of the people. And he's at such a position that he definitely understands the needs of the entire country. And because he's leading the crop sciences program, all crop sciences uh, programs in the country, and he when he learned about this idea, he immediately approved the idea within a very short time without asking him. So I am highly grateful to Dr. Tia Sharma. Equally, I am grateful to Professor Samshir, Honorable Vice Chancellor Sahab, HBTU. And uh, despite being so busy and despite being not from our field and uh, despite being busy in conducting so many, like these days, the police examination is going on in Uttar Pradesh, and he's uh, this HBTU is actually an active partner in organizing this event. So he's too busy with his convocation and so many things, and he has been kind enough to give the permission to organize this program. And I am I am really thankful from the core of my heart, and also on behalf of AICI and Kari Pulses, and we extend our sincere thanks to Professor Samshir. Uh, Dr. Sanjeev Gupta, our additional director general of OILCs and Pulses, our beloved mentor. And uh, our own family member, earlier he was holding this position where I am sitting right now. He was the project coordinator. Now he's the additional director general. And uh, very, very nice, very humble and lovable human being. And actually, it is he who insisted for this training program when we discussed uh, the training needs uh, at our Mumbai meeting. And he has been an instrumental person in getting the things approved very quickly. And actually, although he was supposed to participate in the day one event also and today's event also, but he has been too busy. Day one, he was actually with Honorable Prime Minister uh, uh, for the release of 109 varieties of ICR. So he was with him. You might have seen his photographs also with Honorable Prime Minister. 
today also he's busy he couldn't make it but every day he's calling me and asking me about the progress of this training program so we are highly grateful to Pro dr sanjeev gupta sahab professor vinay patap singh the dean of school of engineering hbtu and professor anita yadav they deserve our sincere appreciations for uh, acceding to a request to organize this program jointly and being there delivering the lectures being there in the inaugural session and their wholehearted and unconditional support to this program they deserve our appreciations i am highly thankful to all the speakers professor tv prabhakar professor anita yadav professor vandana dekshi dr rashi agarwal dr shashwati banerji who is there today also dr saurabh agarwal dr satyam shrivastav dr imran khan dr gaurav saini who delivered a wonderful lecture today and of course dr agrima who delivered dr x yeah very soon you are going to be doctor also so they all delivered wonderful lectures they actually made our training program and so nice people such humble people and you 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 couldn't not even a single time i could just that they were behaving as trainers they were so humble so lovable and uh, so cooperative and uh, respecting everybody i am really grateful to all of you uh lastly actually i find my words quite inadequate in appreciating number one dr rashi agarwal specifically because uh, she, uh, unfortunately she is not here today because she had to leave for some urgent family emergency yesterday itself uh, she is not here today but uh, in, uh, she is uh, so cooperative and so supportive to our program and she supported us full heartedly in this program unconditionally again and uh, throughout the program she was there right from its uh, the program idea development to structuring making different lectures inviting people and uh, accommodating all the participants certificates attendance everything so uh, hats off to dr rashi agarwal and uh, now you must be judging that in the last whom i am going to appreciate it is agrima and uh, she still you. you can see her on the screen a uh, very nice young and enthusiastic researcher at hbtu she is cu currently pursuing her phd and uh, she has been you, you can understand that throughout this training program she has been handling all the things behind the curtain without any kind of stress in fact and so pleasing personality and we all have all our sincere gratitude to agrima and all our wishes and blessings to her that uh, she will definitely shine with the attitude the positive attitude and the supporting attitude she is having so agrima a big thanks to you thank you sir thank uh, you so i will see a few names uh, actually i would also like to thank my colleagues at uh, the i the pc unit especially my two young friends dr satish nayak and uh, dr revan siddha they are the scientists working with me in pc unit and uh, although uh, they they are not showing their face here if they are there they can show their face also so in fact they are uh, the people who are supporting me in all activities related to the project coordination unit all scientific activities like liaising with the people correspondence because we have so much of correspondence and uh, so much of so many things happening here so both the scientists they reduce my uh, workload and give me enough time to uh, steer this training i am also equally thankful to mr rakesh agarwal he was there today he is also traveling due to some family emergency so mr rakesh agarwal is working as a chief technical officer with me and uh, he is looking after so many things in the unit and uh, the all non scientific things he is supporting me besides this i am also highly thankful to all my research staff and students working with me uh, i may miss their names so shall i take their names or not <laughs> yes and sir sure sir anil anil is there abhay then priyanka then divyansh sachin shivam and uh, uh, yeah and then i think two or three more people are there shivam i have already told भैया सुन रहे हो ये दिव्यांश का नाम बता दो किसका छूट रहा है बाद में लड़ाई करोगे नहीं तुमसे तो सो आई एम हैप्पी दिव्यांश इसका नाम छूट रहा है भैया हां मैं सर डॉक्टर प्रियंका हो गया हो गया और अरुण अरुण है नितिन है सर यस अरुण नितिन एंड देन वन मोर यार वो डॉक्टर सतीश के साथ जो लड़का है हमारा अजीत अजीत कुमार गुप्ता अजीत कुमार गुप्ता देन वन मोर देखो नंबर है विश्वजीत विश्वजीत so they are the research fellows scholars students working with us so they have been quite supportive to us and carrying out all our field and lab activities and uh, office activities i am highly thankful to them so ultimately this has been a wonderful program 
and uh, as told uh, already uh, we will try to organize such, more such programs in future the most important thing now about the certificate and participation kindly don't worry we are quite lenient and uh, yes of course definitely those people who have not attended even a single class or maybe uh, less than 50 percent classes although we had fixed it at 80 percent but then we will see the genuine reasons and uh, yes of course those people who have not attended um, most of the classes they will not definitely get a certificate but still we are lenient we'll consider it on case to case basis uh agrima has already submitted a google form google sheet you have already submitted uh, yes sir and i am getting a very good response to that yeah uh, i will circulate a final sheet uh, uh yeah. by tomorrow i'll try to do it by tomorrow sir so just borrow me some time and please bear with bear it with me because the names are so ambiguous and there are multiple entries as well so it's taking a little bit of time but uh, i ensure you all that i'll do all the modifications in time okay? yeah but my request is that please for god's sake please please uh do not give us multiple chances to get the sheet circulated yes, in the sir. first go itself kindly fill only the correct name the name which you would like to appear on the certificate plus designation plus your affiliation correct so that uh, because uh, the more time it will take for correction of the names the more time it will take for distribution and pre preparation and distribution of certificates so please make it uh, sure that uh, the uh, please uh, Dr. Abhima, i think uh, there's some issue with the edit uh, edit sheet kindly ensure yes, that sir. Uh, just now i have restricted the editing uh, editor uh, uh, restriction just now i have put because i'm making some changes and then said what happens is then uh, people are uh, reviewing it and i'm not able to finish so uh, like people are you know getting worried about it so sir i'll make it again uh, visible to everyone by the evening or by the tonight by tonight or maybe tomorrow morning sir no 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 problem no problem so please give us some time maybe around it because uh, we will also be traveling after this so please give us around two two weeks time to finally prepare the certificates as well as the receipts also we'll send receipts and certificates together and uh, kindly bear with, with us and the second thing is that those uh, who have not yet submitted the assignments or those who want to submit their assignment still we will accept it till today evening is it fine Adrima? sure sir. we can do it till tomorrow because today's session so will be too, you are too lenient actually <laughs> no sir okay. because i just circulate today's session so uh, i'll close okay. all the forms by tomorrow evening okay so, so you can you can all see that how large-hearted our organizers are so please please i request you once again that those people who have due to any reason they have not been able to send their answer sheets or assignments kindly do so by tomorrow evening yes yeah tomorrow evening so with this i once again thank and in the last last but not the least i am extremely extremely grateful to all the people all the participants in fact uh, for the our partners from hbtu i must tell you that these are the people these are the best people in the country i always say that the people who are working with me in aicl in khari people says this is the best team of scientists working in the country and I am fortunate to work with them. There are two reasons behind it. Number one, they are working in Kharif pulses, which is a group of most difficult crops to work upon. This is Kharif season, high genotype environment interaction, high temperature fluctuations, lot of problems. And these people, they chose to work in these crops and then take the challenge. This makes them special. So I am, this I say from the core of my heart that I'm extremely grateful to all of you and the feedback I have got from all the speakers and the organizers is that this is one of the most wonderful kind of audience they have ever seen in their life. So very ruly, very disciplined, very humble audience they have seen and they are highly impressed and they have actually got a very positive impression of all the participants. So actually this is a this is in fact uh, uh, something uh, which is in fact increasing my personal stature also that um, this AIC and Kharif Pulse is, is working with such nice people. So thanks to all of you and I wish you all a very good luck with your Khari Pulses and uh, I am I sincerely hope that all the learnings which we have uh, uh, taken during last uh, around 19-20 days, these learnings will definitely, we will try to implement them in the field, in our laboratories as well as in our presentations, analysis and definitely we will be better people than we were before this training program. So thank you very much. Do we have anything to say, add more agreements? Yes, sir. So uh, at last, sir, thank you so much, sir. And I also want to express my gratitude on behalf of Rashi, ma'am, who uh, from for some reason uh, she is not here. 
so uh, thank you so much sir and uh, uh, all the sessions were very were very good and i am getting responses uh, now uh, like uh, now the uh, the test the number of people who have taken the test is reaching up to 100 on an average so that is very good and i am feeling very delighted uh, thank you so much sir and thank you to all the participants uh, who took this uh, session and who made this actually impactful without you uh, whatever whoever is doing doesn't matter because at, finally it converges to you so thank you to all the participants yeah thank you if you can switch on your video for once all i can just let us snap which would be used for record purpose so all the participants are requested to kindly switch on their video i can take a screenshot still many people are not on video can you kindly switch on your video with a smile also <laughs> yeah thank you so i think now we close the program thank yes. you thank you everybody have a nice thank day you. bye bye nice thank you sir thank you sir thank you so much thank you sir thank you thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you thank you Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir.